Today, I'll show you how simple and easy it is to make these fabric roses for Mother's Day. This colorful flora will last way longer than the ones you spend so much money on in the store just for them to die. You can make them in any color combination you want, and any mother will be so happy to receive these. The best part is, you don't even need a sewing machine to make them. I'll show you how fast, simple, and easy these are to whip up next. Alright guys, so the things that you're going to need to make this fabric flower bouquet for Mother's Day are some cotton fabric. This is a great stash buster project, so I'm going to go ahead and use all different colors. But this would also look great, say, in all blues with different tones and hues. You're also going to need something for the stem. Now you could use chopsticks, straws, or anything like that. But I went outside and did a little tree trimming, and I got these sticks here. They're about a quarter inch thick and about 15 to 16 inches long. Now when I put these in the vase, I may have to trim them down a bit, but that's not a problem. You're going to need some sort of yarn or string or even thin rope. Today I'm just going to use green here, but you could match your yarn or rope to your fabric. You're also going to need your hot glue gun with glue sticks. And also your sewing machine if you have one. We'll be using a basting stitch today. Or you can just do this with a needle and thread also. So let's get started. Alright guys, so after digging through my fabric stash and my scrap box, I decided I'm going to make a dozen of these fabric flowers. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is go ahead and cut each of your fabrics into 2.5 by 24 inch strips. Just like that. And you want to go ahead and do that to all of your fabrics. For video purposes, I'm just going to do this one. So the next thing that we're going to do is roll this up into a little rectangle. So what I'm going to do is my first fold here, I'm going to make sure that it's about an inch and a half wide. Now continue to roll this all the way up. Just like that, you should have a little fabric sushi roll. Next, using some sharp scissors, we're going to go ahead and round off the corners on the top here. That's going to form the petals of our flower. Now you just want to open this right back up. And if you need to, you can go ahead and round off some of these corners or a little bit square. So just take your scissors here and even them up. This does not have to be perfect, people. Alright guys, and if you can see right here, this notch is bigger than this notch. So you can also just go ahead and enlarge your notches. Just like that, and continue to round these off. Like I said, they don't have to be perfect. Nature is perfectly imperfect. Now it should look something like this. So the next thing that we're going to do is gather this together. So I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine, and using the longest straight stitch I have on my machine, which for me is a four, I'm going to sew about a half inch up from the bottom. The bottom is the straight edge right here and I'm going to sew all the way across. You do not want to backstitch at the beginning or the end. Now if you don't have a sewing machine you can just go ahead and get a needle and thread starting about a half inch up and just go in and out, in and out, in and out and that will work just fine. Alright guys so I'm over here at my sewing machine like I said, I will be using a straight stitch with the longest length that your machine has. 
For me, it's about a four. I'm going to be using a half inch seam allowance. And the color of thread in your machine really doesn't matter here. I still have blue in mine from when I was mending my jeans. So that'll work just fine. It's going to be covered up by the yarn. So I'm going to start stitching here. And you do not want to backstitch at the beginning or the end. Alright guys, now you just want to gather this up. If you're using your sewing machine, you want to carefully take your bobbin thread, which is the thread at the bottom here, hold it pretty firmly, and just start gathering. At this point, you want to be very careful that you don't break your thread. Now if you're just doing this with a needle and thread, you just want to hold on to your one string. I find it actually a lot easier if you just did this by needle and thread to gather this together. But just keep working at it and it'll go. No. And when I got about half of it gathered, I just like to go ahead and turn it to the other side and gather the rest. Alright guys, now it should look something like this. At this point, I just like to go ahead and trim some of this extra thread away. And how much you gather this will determine the shape of your flower. If you gather it a whole bunch, you'll have a tight little rosebud. I like it somewhere in the middle, so I don't want it that gathered. So this started about 24 inch length, so now I've gathered it down to about 13. For me, that's a perfect flower size. So the next thing that you're going to want to do is grab one of your sticks and your hot glue gun. Now, like I said, you don't have to use sticks. I just kind of like the rustic look of these. You could use chopsticks, drinking straws, or even a wooden dowel. So the next step that we're going to do is I'm going to put about a half inch line of glue right on the stick here. Just like that. And when you cut these, you'll have one half of a petal, usually. So I like to start with that petal first. And I'm going to go ahead and glue it right onto my stick. So now we're just going to wrap our gathered fabric around the stick. And every so often, put a dot of glue. Now after you do your first couple of wraps, you can really see the flower shape taking form. Alright guys, so now I reached my end here, so I'm just going to put a dot of glue right there. And to secure that into place. Alright guys, so you can see here it does look like a rose. But the bottom, it still looks pretty crappy. So the next thing you're going to do is grab your yarn. So now that I have my yarn here, I'm going to put a line of glue right here, but I'm going to start right above where my stitch line is. Just like that. Now being very careful, hot glue is hot. We're going to put our yarn right there. So now we're just going to wrap our yarn around the bottom of our rows here. And you want to pull it pretty tight. Now I went down past my fabric here and I'm going to go back up one more time and then back down another time just to make sure I have everything nice and covered.
Now go ahead and put a dot of glue there and cut your yarn. Now at this point, you can see that this petal is kind of sticking out away from the flower. So what I'm going to do is just put a little dot of hot glue there. And stick this petal down. Just like that. Now doesn't that look like a beautiful rose? Alright guys, now your fabric rose is done. Now I'm going to choose just to keep it like this. I kind of like that rustic, shabby chic look of it, but if you wanted to, you can go ahead and add little felt leaves or fabric leaves. I actually did try it on one of the roses, and I didn't like it. So now, I'm just going to make the other 11, and I'll show you what it looks like when I have a dozen done. Alright guys, so now my fabric roses are complete. I went ahead and put them in a pretty vase, added a little bow, and went ahead and printed off a Mother's Day card right off the computer. Now, if that don't say love, I don't know what does. Now, this makes the perfect Mother's Day gift, and any mother will be thrilled to receive such a beautiful bouquet. That'll last a lifetime. But it doesn't just have to be for Mother's Day. It could be for any day that you want to show Mom just how much you really care about her. Now, I hope this video is up by Mother's Day. If not before, I've been having a lot of internet problems, and you may have noticed that my videos have been pretty sporadic lately. Hopefully the problem's fixed, and I'll get back on track with my Wednesday, Sunday videos. I hope you give this project a try. If you like my video and want to see more of my videos, go down below and hit the big red subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. If you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, or would just like to leave a suggestion for a future upcoming video, leave me a comment. Feel free to share this video across your social media. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.